Namo Buddhaya. Welcome to Monks in the Morning from Colombo Dhamma France of Mahameonawa. The monks here are so happy to get to spend time with you now. Have you ever eaten a mango before? I'm sure you have. Have you ever thought about how some people are like mangoes? Probably not. Well, today we'll learn a really great simile to help us understand different kinds of people in the world just like there are different kinds of mangoes. Let's begin the day by going for refuge and taking the five precepts. Before we take the five precepts, we should think back about any precepts we may have broken since the last time we took them. It's good if we can tell our parents if we have, but even if we feel too shy to do that, we can still make the decision right now to not break those precepts again. So think for a moment if you've broken any precepts, and then we'll take them again together. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Say together with me. Namo tasa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasa Buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Saṅgaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyaṃ pe buddhaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyaṃ pe dhammaṃ saranaṃ gacchāmi Dutiyam pe sangam saranam gacchami Tatiyam pe buddhaṃ saranam gacchami Tatiyam pe dhammaṃ saranam gacchami Tatiyam pe sangam Saranam Gachami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu Now to observe the five precepts, say after me, say loudly. I observe the precept of abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of abstaining from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs I follow these precepts for happiness in this life for rebirth in heaven 
and to realize the Four Noble Truths. In this Gautama Buddha's dispensation, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Supremely Enlightened One, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo buddhaya, meritorious children. Today we are going to learn about mangoes. Mangoes and we are comparing our life to mangoes. So in this sutta, you will understand to which type of mango you belong to. So Buddha preaches, dear bhikkhus, there are these four types of mangoes. What four? Now children imagine the Buddha's realization. Try to understand the Buddha's realization, how much Buddha knows about the world. Buddha preaches, one is unripe but seems ripe. Second one, one is ripe but seems unripe. Third one, one is unripe and sees unripe. The fourth one is, one is ripe and seems ripe. Now see children, when you go to shops, you might see your parents would bring you mangoes. And then you cut the mango and see, but then it's unripe. Can you eat? No, then you get angry. So it's not what you see you have inside. So it's not what you get as you see also from external, from the external appearance. Second one is, one is ripe but seems unripe. So actually it's ripened, but then it doesn't look like ripen. So then your parents then your parents might not buy those good ones. Then you won't get good ones. So there are mangoes. It looks unripe. It is unripe and it looks unripe. So that is good. Then you can recognize and abandon them. You can avoid buying them. The last one is, one, there are mangoes that are ripe, that are ripen, and seems ripen. So which one would you prefer? So when you know the mangoes, which are ripen and seems to be ripe, then you can buy the good one. And when you know the unripen one as unripen, you cannot buy them. So the... Buddha preachers, in the same way, these four people similar to mangoes are found in the world. What for? Now Buddha is explaining and comparing the humans to these four types of mangoes. Now you should understand and realize to which kind of mango you belong to. One is unripe but seems ripe. So again the four types of mangoes. Then Buddha explains, how is a person unripe but seems ripe? It's when a person is impressive when going out and coming back. When, when looking ahead and aside, when bending and extending the limbs and when bearing the outer robe, outer robe, ball and robes, but they don't understand, but they don't really understand the Four Noble Truths. That means if you take a monk, he could walk slowly. He could wear the robes very well. He would perform very slow actions and could be soft-spoken. But if it is a monk who does not know the Four Noble Truths, that's like a unripe mango but seems to be ripened. So there are kids. Recently we had, a, we had some children came to the monastery. They offered dana very well. They looked very humble. Then we were amazed, we were shocked. Then when we asked the parents, the parents said, No, Bhante, 
you should come home and see the way they behave even the school teachers don't believe that these children are misbehaving at home then only i understood that oh they are unripe but seems to be ripe so we can't understand a person from the external appearance and the impressions that we see and the actions the buddha preaches that it takes a long time to recognize a wise and a superior person so don't be like a unripened mango that seems like ripen so some children at school at home they are very good to their parents but when they go to school a different life in front of the school teachers and in front of parents they are very good but with the friends horrible so don't show two lives for two different people why then where that's where would the preachers you know then when you when you show two different lives to the society you pretend good for one people then you show the reality for some people then what happens would the preachers when you deceive others showing a good life without having a good life that's where there are animals there are creatures whose tongue is split whose tongue is split the tongue will split if you show two characters to people don't do that children then buddha preaches and how is a person ripe but seems unripe it's when a person is not impressive that means they are walking fast then running around screaming then uh maybe no does not have very calm actions does not wear the robe properly but then internally have understood the four noble truths so in the same way there could be a child who might not dress very well who might not comb her hair very well but then internally her mind or his mind is ripened with the buddha's teachings so don't judge people from their external actions there was a monk during the buddha's time that monk called people as outcast he called people wasalaya but then monks went and complained to the buddha see this monk is calling the other monk saying wasalaya but then buddha said that is a habit in a previous life he has been a king he has lived as a king in many previous lives so that's the practice of his previous lives so that's a way of his speaking but he is an arahant so don't judge people from the external appearance associate for a long time and then only you can understand and only, and only a wise person can understand whether another person is wise or a foolish so first of all individually we ourselves we should become wise first of all before we judge others whether they are wise or fools then would the preachers and how is a person unripe and seems unripe so that means he is a person who does not behave very well no good external no good external actions at all and internally the mind is polluted with lust and and delusion does have not understood the four noble truths also so they are the ones who are unripe and seems to be unripe so we have to be very careful buddha said aseva nacha balana pandita nancha sevana pandita nancha sevana puja cha pujaniya nang etam mangalam uttamam don't associate bad people pandita nancha sevana we have to associate wise people so when you come to dhamma school when you come on the poi day you meet good friends you meet good monks you meet good uncles and aunties so that's why children you know recognizing good people and bad people is not a easy task that's why we should dedicate our lives to understand these things 
So then don't become a mango like unripen and seems unripen. Then Buddha preaches, and how is a person ripe and seems ripe? So that's where a person who walks nicely, who wears the robe properly, who eats properly, who talks properly, he who handle, who perform the bodily actions very well, calm postures, slow, well, slowly walk, mindfully they walk, and internally, their minds they have understood the four noble truths. So they are like the mangoes, which are really ripen and seems to be ripen. So which one is good? The last one, where a person is ripe and seems to be ripen. So, dear children, let's learn this Buddha's teachings. Now see how Buddha explained things with similes. He took this simile and explained things. So first we can understand the nature of a mango. The, the, the ones that are ripen and unripen. Then we can compare that nature to our lives. So it's easy to understand the Buddha's teachings. That's why the Buddha's teachings are known as Swakata. Well taught. The Blessed One's teachings are well taught. It's good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. So when you apply these teachings, you can see results in this life. Sanditiko. Akaliko, you can understand and realize this Dhamma in any time. Ehipasiko, we can invite others to come and see whether you have a life like a mango. We can invite others and tell, okay, compare your life to a mango and see. Then he will understand. Ehipasiko, open aiko, we have to see this Dhamma from ourselves. We can understand the nature of a mango and we can. We can observe our mind and see whether we have a ripened mind or unripened mind. Whether we have wholesome qualities or unwholesome qualities. So, this people's wisdom, this Dhamma can be only understood according to the people's wisdom. So this is a wonderful Dhamma. This is a wonderful Dhamma where people can understand according to their wisdom and their capacity. So then there is no stress, children. So wonderful and amazing. Today you learn the Buddha's six qualities of the Dhamma and also the nature of a mango. So may you have the opportunity to develop your li mind, to develop your life like a ripened mango and look like a ripened mango and realize the Buddha's teachings in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, 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 Namo Buddhaya. Paritta Chanting, Karaniya Metta Sutta, The Discourse on Loving Kindness. Turn to page 24 in your chanting book. If you don't have a copy of the Mahamehunawa chanting book, you can click on the show notes link to download a copy of this sutta. Today, we'll chant the sutta in Pali and English. Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhasse Karaniya matta kusalena yantang santang padang abhisamicca Sakko ujucha sujucha suvacho chasa mudu anatimani One skilled in good, wishing to attain that state of peace Nibbana should act thus, he should be clever Upright, exceedingly upright, obedient, gentle, and humble, 
शांतुषकोच शुभरोच अपकिचोच साल्लुकवृत्ति शांतिन्द्रियोच निपकोच अपगब्बो कुलेशुअनुगिदो हि शुड बी कंटेंट is it to support with few duties living lightly controlled in senses discerning courteous and unattached to families nachakuddang samachare kinchi ये न विन्यो परे उपवदेयु सुखिनो वाके मिनो हंतु सब्बे सत्ता भवंतु सुखी तत्ता वन शुड नॉट डू एनी स्लाइट रोंग व्हिच द वाइज माइट सेंशर May all beings be happy and secure may all beings have happy minds ye ke chipan bhutatti tasava tavara vanavasesa digavaye mahantava मज्जि मारस कानुकतूला वट एवर लिविंग बींग्स दे आर मे बी विदाउट एक्सेप्शन टिमिड ऑफियल लॉन्ग ऑ लाज मीडियम शॉर्ट सटल ग्रॉस दिट्टावायेवादिट्ट ये च दूरे वसन्ति अविदूरे भूतावा संभवे शिवा सब्बे सत्ता भवन्तु सुखि तत्ता विसिबल लो इनविसिबल लिविंग नियर ऑफ born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds na paro parang nikubbet jnati manyet katta chinang kanchi byarosana pati ghasanya jnanya manyas dukham icchaya let no one deceive another no despise any one anywhere neither from anger no ill will should any one wish harm to another mata yata niyang putang आयुषा एक पुत्र मनुराके एवं पिशाब बूते सु मन संग बावे अपरिमानं एस अ मदर वुड रिस्क हर ओन लाइफ टू प्रोटेक्ट हर ओनली चाइल्ड इवन सो टुवर्ड्स ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स one should cultivate boundless loving kindness metancha sab lokasmin man sang bhavaye aparimanam uddang adocha tiriyancha asang badang averam aspattam one should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving kindness above below and all around unobstructed without hatred or resentment 
ติดตั้งจารังนิสินโนวะสายานุวะยาวตัสสวิกัตมิดดเอตังสติงอาดิตเตยบรัคมเมตังวิหารังอิดมาหูเวเดสเตนดิงวอล์คิงอาสิตติงลายิงดาวน์โอวเอนเวอร์เวกวันชุดดีเวลับดิสมายน์ฟุลเนส This is called divinely dwelling here. The t i n c h e r a n u p a g a m a s i l a v a d a s a n e n a s a m p a n n o k a m e s u v i n e y a g e d a n g Nahijatu gabba seyang punareti ti. Not falling into wrong views. But virtuous and possessing right view, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Ete na sajje na suvati hotu. By this truth. May they all be well being. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I'm so happy we were able to spend time together today. We hope that you learned something new, and we really hope that you can use what you learned as you go about the rest of your day. Do you remember the kind of mango that we want to try and be? One that looks like it's ripe. And is ripe. We want to be someone whose good qualities are completely developed inside of us. Now let's share merits. May all heavenly beings rejoice in the merits done here today. May our teacher Lokasoya Hunksa have a happy mind, remembering these wholesome actions. May our parents, our teachers, our families, our friends, may they all have a happy mind, thinking about the good karma that we've done. May they rejoice in this merit, and may they soon experience for themselves the supreme bliss of nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sad, sad, sad. Namo Buddhaya.